Hi everyone, today we will be talking about uterine inversion and this slide is uh, adapted from Salso. The aim of this tutorial is to learn how to diagnose uterine inversion and the steps to manage uterine inversion. Again, the basic principle of obstetric emergency, it go back to RISAS, whereby you need to recognize what is a uterine inversion and you need to have early assessment on how is the severity and you need to stabilize and resuscitate the patient, which it go back to the DRS ABC. And urgent management for uterine inversion includes replacement of the uterus, either manually or surgically. And you have to pro provide analgesia and antibiotics, tocolysis, and also subsequently, when you have revert the uterus, you need to maintain the uterine contractility. As for subsequent management, specialist referral and special measures, uh, you need to anticipate the complications such as PPH and also you need to have POSOP care. Uterine inversion is actually not common. It's around 1 in 2,000 deliveries and the common cause is because of mismanagement of third stage whereby there is excessive contraction and excessive under pressure and the control contraction was not performed properly. And the other causes such as placenta accreta, congenital predisposition such as those who has a Marfan syndrome whereby they have connective tissue disease and the uterus is rather lax so therefore it is easy to be inverted. And also the other thing is fundal implantation of the placenta. To recognize uterine inversion, you need to know the clinical presentation. They can have abdominal pain, whereby after delivery of the fetus, they should not feel abdominal pain. But they have this abdominal pain you should suspect is either a uterine rupture or a uterine inversion. They can also have postpartum hemorrhage and they can have sudden collapse whereby the degree of shock is inconsistent with the amount of blood loss. But what does it mean? It means that if let's say you have a patient who bleed around 200 cc but then the BP is 60 over 40, heart rate is around 60, the degree of shock is much way more than the amount of blood loss that you see. And on examination, when you palpate the abdomen, there is absence of the uterine fundus or you can feel a dimpling over the fundus. And when you look at the introitus, you can see there is a fleshy mass at the outside of the introitus. For early assessment, you will need to know the classification of uterine inversion whereby it has been classified into four degrees. For first degree, the uterus fundus is actually inverted. You can see a dimpling over the fundal area and it does not pass beyond the cervix. Whereas second degree is when the body of the uterus has passed through the cervix over here. And third degree is the uterus has already prolapsed and inverted uterus is outside the vulva. You can see the fleshy mat meat over here. And Fourth degree is even the vagina is actually prolapsed outside. As for management, it go back to resus. You need to recognize it and you also need to know the severity, whether the patient is in shock or not in shock. And you need to stabilize and resuscitate the patient by DRS ABC. Again, danger, response, shock for health, in which you try inversion, is you need to call for red alert. You need to involve the senior personnel early and then you go back to your ABC, airway breathing circulation. You need to have excess of IV lines and GXM because you know that this patient is prone to have postpartum hemorrhage. And if let's say you see the placenta is attached on the uterus, please do not remove the placenta because it will, you will worsen the condition. Because once you have removed the placenta, it is very difficult to replace the uterus back. Okay, so how to replace the uterus? You can do it manually with or with a hydrostatic uh, replacement technique or you can go to operating theatre with surgery and you may also require tocolytic agent and anesthesia. How do you manually replace the uterus? You replace by pressing the first on the part of the uterus which inverted last. So what does it mean? Oh, okay, if you see this dimpling area, the uterine fundus area, is the first thing to come out. But you replace this at the last. But at this area, is the last to come out. So you push this part first. You push it at the lateral side and then slowly 
you will be able to, this is the fundus again, you will be able to push it slowly again. And fundus is the last part that you supposed to return it back. Once you have replaced it, your hand should be kept in a fist inside the uterus and then the outside the another hand to support and you should start your oxytotic drugs immediately even though the placenta is still inside so that you can feel a firm contraction. Once you feel the firm contraction, then only you proceed with MRP. This is how you try immersion happen as you pull the placenta. So the fundus is the first thing to come out first and then the side way is actually the side way here is the last to come out. How do we replace the uterus manually? We start with the part that come out last, all right, which is here. And this hand is just to hold the fundus. Fundus is the first part that come out. We shouldn't push that first. So we start with the last part that come out and then you push it in slowly. As you have written it, you put a fist inside the uterus and the other hand on the abdomen to hold it and stabilize it. Then you start oxytocin to maintain the contraction. Once you have achieved the contraction, you can do an MRP. The other method is the O'Sullivan's hydrostatic method in which a tube is actually passed into the posterior fornix and then you have to close the vulva and the warm saline is run until the pressure gradually restores the position of the uterus. This is how it means. So you can either use the normal saline tube, the drip set, or you use a silicone cup because the benefit of silicone cup is it provides a better sealing at the intraitus here. So you hang your warm saline at least one to two meter above the patient and then you run the fluids inside. But first, first of all, you have to exclude the possibilities of uterine rupture. Okay. As for surgical replacement of the uterus, there are two procedures. One is a Haltain's procedure, the other one is Huntington procedure. Basically, you do a laparotomy, and then uh, for Huntington procedure is that you find the round ligament, and then you use the Alice forceps and pull it up slowly. And the other way is Halton's procedure in which you cut the posterior part of the rim. Okay, you do not cut the anterior because you don't want to cut until the bladder, so you cut the posterior part, and then you pull up. Once you have reworked, you suture back. Okay, so with the aid of uh, general anesthetic drugs such as uh, halotane, you can actually relax the uterus. The other medication that you can use is your tocolytic drugs such as sabutamol and also ritoridine. How do we prevent uh, uterine immersion? Is by doing a proper control cord traction. Okay, you don't want to uh, you don't want to have too much of traction. You have to wait for the signs of placenta separation and do not do a fundal pressure when you deliver the placenta. This is the summary of the management of uterine inversion. So you go back to the basic. You need to recognize the uterine inversion. You need to know what are the clinical manifestation. Okay, and then you need to know how severe it is what degree of shock the patient is. You need to stabilize the patient. You need to resuscitate, which is your DRS ABC. And for urgent management, you need to replace the uterus manually or surgically. You need to provide analgesia and you need to give broad spectrum antibiotic. And you also need to consider about tocolysis. And also you need to, after the tocolysis, after you have manually or surgically replaced the uterus, you need to start oxytotic, oxytotic drugs to maintain the uterine contractility, then only you remove the placenta and your subsequent management will depend on patient severity and you should anticipate PPH and also have to arrange for post-op care and tertiary center referral. Okay, with that, I thank you.